on another issue where I have been criticized for. And that is, again, I'm thinking too big. You know, I'm, I'm asking too much. And I am saying, I am saying, why is it that if the United Kingdom, France, Germany, Holland, all of Scandinavia, Italy, Canada, in fact, every major country on earth can guarantee health care to all of their people, why can't we do that in the United States of America? Now, in my view, the Affordable Care Act has done a lot of good things, and I'm on the committee that helped write the Affordable Care Act. What we have done is done away with this obscenity, private insurance company obscenity of pre-existing conditions. All right? We have done away with discrimination against women who are paying higher premiums because they are women. We have, we have added 17 million Americans into the ranks of the insured. All of that is a good thing. But today, 29 million Americans still have no health insurance. And many of you, if I am not mistaken, have high deductibles and high copayments. Am I right? Yeah. All right. Who wants to tell me? Anyone want to tell me what your deductibles are? How much? 5,000 a year. 5,000? thousand dollars a month to have the union insure so despite the union benefits it's a thousand bucks a month thousand bucks a month and that's what your family is paying a thousand dollars a month and a thirty five hundred dollar deductible so here is the problem technically you are insured you're in the ranks of the insured but in reality thousand dollars a month is a good part of your income is it not all right, this, what this woman just said is she's spending a thousand bucks, correct me if I'm wrong, a thousand dollars a month out of pocket, which is over half of your income. All right, my friends, well, that's another issue about dental care is another issue. Okay. All right. But her story... You see, now, in the statistics, you're insured. End of discussion. Everything is great. But in reality, it's not so great. In reality, I mean, it's hard to believe. Again, this gets back. We are the wealthiest country in the history of the world. This woman is just telling us she's spending over half of her income on health care, despite having union health care. Yes? All right. That is insane. Are you all get that? It's insane. And then what you got is you got millions of people who have these high deductibles. And if you have a high deductible and you don't have a lot of money, what happens? You don't go to the doctor. And I have talked to doctors all over this country. And you know what they tell me? People are walking into their offices much sicker than they should be. And the doctor says, why didn't you come to me six months ago when you first felt your symptom? And they say, well, I had a high deductible. Or I didn't have any health insurance at all. And then you know what happens? Some of those people die. In fact, thousands of people in this country every year die because they don't get to a doctor when they should. Or they end up in the hospital much sicker than they should have been. Bottom line here is pretty simple to me. When you got 29 million people with no health insurance, when you have people like that woman who are very, very underinsured, when we pay the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs, we are in a situation which is so crazy where one out of five people who go to the doctor and get a prescription they are unable to afford to pay for that prescription. Stop. Think for a moment. 
How crazy is that? If you are sick and you go to the doctor and the doctor says, okay, this is your problem, A, B, C. Here's your prescription. It will help you. But I can't afford to fill the prescription. What happens if I don't afford, can't afford to fill the prescription? You get sicker. Maybe you die. And in fact, there are oncologists writing to us in Congress who are saying that our cancer patients cannot afford the medicine that they need. We got veterans who are dealing with hepatitis C. And you know there's a new drug out, a very good drug. You know what it costs a pill? Thousand dollars a pill. Meanwhile, that same drug is sold around the world for much, much lower prices. In the 1990s, I took Vermonters over the Canadian border. Women who had breast cancer, they were able to buy the medicine they needed in Canada for one-tenth of the price they were paying in Vermont. Does any of this make sense? This is crazy stuff. And that is why I believe it is time to take on the pharmaceutical industry, the private insurance company. And why I believe we have got to move toward a Medicare for all health care program. Health care, in my view, is a right, not a privilege. And we are now paying. Everybody needs to know this. We pay almost three times per person what they do in the United Kingdom, 50% more than the French, far more than the Canadians. We can, if we move to a Medicare for All program, save the average middle class person family thousands of dollars a year in health care costs. That's what we should be doing.